Sickle. Hey there, pedal pushers. Welcome back to the project. Guess who's back? Did you miss me? No? Oh. Sniffle. Sniffle. Well, anyways, if you don't know who I am, and for copyright reasons, I'll just say that I'm your favorite annoying know-it-all trail guide. Today we are going to go over my version of the ultimate, affordable touring bike, the 2017 Surly Disc Trucker that I bought as a frame set and built with my own parts. This is the 26-inch disc wheel version of the Surly Long Haul Trucker even though the disc trucker is available in a 700C29er version. But more on that later. Let's start off by explaining why I decided to buy a Surly. Well, it was because of the features of course. This bike has almost everything you could want in a touring bike. Let's start off with the eyelets and brazons. They are everywhere. Even a pump peg for your old school full size frame pump. You will have no problem finding mounting points for your fenders, racks or anything else that you decide to install. On the fork you have two eyelets on each of the dropouts. Another one at mid fork and another one at the top outside part of the crown. You will also find a center crown bolt hole for your lighting, fenders or reflectors. Next, you have three water bottle cage mounts for all your water. Believe me, you can never find enough places to put your water. Another cool little feature is the spare spoke holder on the rear seat stay. You can mount up to three spare spokes here. The craftsmanship. This is a very nicely built frame with lots of cool little design details. Flexibility. Having one of the most common hub and bottom bracket sizes. A 68 by 118 mm bottom bracket and a 135 mm rear hub and a 100 mm front hub. The comfort. Boy. This thing is smooth and comfy. At 5 foot 10 inches tall, however a little small. The geometry of the 56 centimeter trucker is perfect for my aging back. Combined your trucker with a riser or flat bar instead of the bullhorn bars, a 25 degree stem, a Brooks B17 saddle and you got yourself a very comfortable bike that you can ride painlessly for hundreds of miles. Next, the cost. Oh crap. Where are my notes? Where did I put them? Oh wait. Here they are. For $500 for a frame and fork. Or right around $1,500 for a complete bike you really can't go wrong. Now, getting back to the wheels. I chose to go with the 26-incher for a few different reasons. One being that the 26-inch wheel is pretty much the standard wheel size in the entire world. No matter where you are at, you will never have a problem finding replacement tubes, tires, or even a complete wheel. Next is the strength. The 26er is so much stronger than the 700C wheels. Have you ever noticed the sticker fatties fit fine on the chain stay? No? Well, this is not because it can fit all of you oversized beer belly pedal pushers just fine. Another reason why I chose the 26er is because the variety of different types of tires that can be used. Everything from a 26 by 1.25 city slick to the most extreme hardcore 26 by 2.2 off-road knobby. The disc trucker can fit them. Hence the slogan fatties fit fine. I decided to go with the 26 by 1.25 Schwalb marathons. Not the Marathon Plus because I wanted to save a little bit of weight. The Marathon Plus weighed around 100 grams more and after a while grams add up to kilos and at this point the bike is starting to get a little heavy with all the crap that I have on it. Around 40 pounds as seen here in this picture with all the bags empty and on the bike. At 160 pounds I'm considered a lightweight rider so I decided to run a 32 hole Mavic XM 719 rim with Wheelsmith double butted 2.0 spokes. This wheel set was not cheap at around 800 US dollars and that's building them myself. You can expect to pay about $150 or more to have someone build you a set. On the rear is a DT Swiss 350 rear hub with a 12-34 tooth SRAM 9-speed PG990 cassette. On the front is a Biologic Jewel 3 Dynamo hub with a power converter on the front fork to power all of my electronics. Soon I'll be making a separate video that will go into more about the Jewel 3 so you should probably like this video and subscribe to our channel for the upcoming video. For racks, I'm running the salsa down under racks that seem to work well with my Ordeb roll over city panniers. However I did have to modify the rack ever so slightly to keep the bags from sliding back and forth. Hashtag a little electrical tape. On the rear, for commuting and shorter rides, I use the Topeka Explorer rear rack with the Topeka MTX trunk bags. If you are planning on using Explorer rack I would recommend getting the disc brake model. Having the extra width is helpful. The standard model will work but the bottom J-hooks come very close to hitting the rear dropouts making it a little harder to secure your panniers to the bottom of the rack. For longer rides, I use the Arkle GT54 Grand Touring panniers which also seem to work very well. One other thing you should consider is chasing out the eyelets with a tap. Surly for some reason doesn't cover the holes during the powder coating process. The coating gets down inside the threads making it very difficult to tighten the bolts without breaking them off inside the frame. Here you can see how one had broken off inside making it very difficult to get the broken piece out. Up at the helm, I'm using a Forte carbon fiber flat bar from Performance Bike Shop and Profile T2 clip-ons. 
The grips are Ergon GP1 with Forte carbon stick bar ends. A Topeka 2 or Guide 302 front bag and a Topeka iPhone mount. The stem is a Salsa 115mm with a 25 degree rise and a Cane Creek 40 threadless headset. The 9 speed shifters are also Forte from Performance. Hello, are you still there? Are you getting all of this? The crank set is a Shimano 590 Dior Hollow Tech 3x9 speed triple with 48 36 26 tooth chain rings and Shimano XT clipless pedals. Dior front and rear derailers and a SRAM 9 speed chain. The fenders are from Planet Bike and work awesome at keeping me clean and dry. Stopping power comes from Avid BB7S mechanical disc brakes that will soon be getting upgraded to the TRP Spire calipers. Some cheap S 160mm rotors off of eBay. Hey, they look cool okay? Avid speed dial 7 brake levers. The saddle is a Brooks B17 that soon will be sitting on a Cane Creek Thudbuster seat post. Not that I really need a suspension seat post because this thing rides so smoothly. Phew. Well, I believe that's about all. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Have I missed anything? Let me know in the comments. You can also find us on Facebook at Chicago Peddler Project for other cool stuff. Until next time remember, keep the rubber side down and on one wheel.